She is the pride of Ontario and Oklahoma. And all points in between are also the NFL Network. My colleague from the NFL Network, Stacey Dales, here in person. Good to see you. It's wonderful to be here, seeing you in this setting and, gosh, all the years in the NFL together. And That's right. all the way back to ESPN. That's right. So you're turning 21 and I'm yes. turning 15. <laughs> Yes, Stacy, you are accurate. No, actually, that's the most accurate you've ever been in any of your reporting. I thought so. 21 and 15. Thank you. All right, let's get to this real quick right off the bat. <laughs> you brought me a birthday <laughs> gift, which is in this red bag for the radio audience. I'll describe it. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll wait um, to take out the gift. I already know what's in there. So does the television audience. So this was Thanksgiving, the Har Bowl, right? It was Jim mm -hmm. versus... Uh, John, John in yeah. Baltimore, Maryland. Mm -hmm. um, and Steve Bashotti, the owner of the Ravens, invited us all on his boat the night before. He did. Right? Mm -hmm. And we all hung out, some of us a little too late. How long did you hang out on the boat that night? Were you with us the whole entire uh, time, or did you, or, or were you? I, I could forecast what was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have a way of doing that. Yes. And I, I sense danger. <laughs> so I. Smartly avoided the situation. Yeah, I did not. And uh, I showed up for work the next day, and it was the Thursday first Thursday night football, Rich. I know that. <laughs> All those years we did Thursday night football. No, but I do, know, I do want to point this out, though. It wasn't for the night broadcast. We were doing like a game day morning. Yeah. We, mm -hmm. we, we, we did yes. like a 9 a.m. Eastern early. kick. Yep. And so I, um, for the first time in my career, showed up That's for work right. at 7 in the morning thinking I might not answer the bell for the <laughs> okay. first time in wow. my career. Like, literally woke up that day, I got to work, and you saw me that day. Uh, How did I look? Do you I remember had, that? I had already been there reporting, yes. like a good soldier. Yeah. And I watched you walk into the stadium. I have never seen you like that in my <laughs> lifetime. And we've known each other for, what, 15 yes. years, At whatever least. it's been? Yes, correct. And... I saw Rich, who had just run 140s <laughs> and was probably putting back some 40s <laughs> and some cigars. Can Which I, I never that? do, by uh, the way. I never do. Like, literally. Uh, never. Well, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, late you night, walked you know, up to I, me. I, I, I do, you know, <laughs> on occasion take, you know, whatever, a liberty, but not like that. You were unshaven. Oh, my gosh. You, Prior I could just beard. smell the delicious scent of Did I really? musty cigar. And I Yikes. never show up to work that way. <laughs> All right, so then you came up with the greatest concoction that I have actually even brought up on occasion here on this show. Mm -hmm. what, what, is the, what is the lifesaver that you provided me that day? Well, why don't you open the bag, Rich? Okay. It helps. She, she gave me a, uh, <laughs> a, a Gatorade, a banana, okay, yep. and an emergency. That's right. Two emergencies. Mm-hmm. In a Gatorade, mm -hmm. preferably a G2, okay, because that sugar is just going to crush you. Okay, you're going to come down from that. Uh huh. And then the banana as like a chaser, yeah. which like gets the palate better, makes the palate feel better. And so you're, you, you know, your your hangover sorbet of sorts. <laughs> and um and 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 this is for you. There it is. I had an emer. I didn't you, have an emergency on the way here, but you brought me some emergency. I wanted to bring you something. I love it. That you would remember. <laughs> Well done, and Stacey. Feel free no. to set it up wherever you well, like. So how often well did this uh, bail you out back in the day, oh, Stacey? Well, I was a professional athlete, Rich. I know. Yeah. So, wow. Flex. Um, no, I'm just kidding. No. that's what. I, and that's Every why now I, and then we went out on the road. Yes. And when I played basketball and no, yeah. I, I just try to stay healthy. So. Well, you don't just be the number three overall pick in the WNBA draft without having a trick up uh, of the trade <laughs> and any, knowing any of that sort of well, stuff. Well, and I'm Canadian. But, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing is, is that we had a Washington, D.C. trip uh, a couple of uh, uh, Januaries ago, and we hit it really hard that, mm -hmm. uh, at dinner. And then the entire crew showed up hanging, and I'm like, I've got just Del the trick. Del Tufo? Oh, yeah. Brockman? We were. Yes. Yeah. Name them. You pretty much yeah. you pretty much met almost every human yeah, being. Yeah, we were all there. Yeah, we and guess there. what we did? We're like, I'm like somebody's got to go get some emergency. Somebody's got to go get some Gatorade and some bananas. And how did you guys feel? Showing off oh. without a hitch. Showing off without I a hitch. I imagine it was our greatest show ever. I think it was yeah. in Washington, yeah. D.C. Yeah. So great to have you here, Stacey. Thank you for my birthday gift. You're welcome. Um, so you were in Packers camp. And were you there when the coach blew his Achilles out? Were you there for that? I wasn't there. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really know if anybody captured that. So you, he wasn't playing pickup with you, is what you're saying? Pickup game no. with you in that conversation? Well, I would have won, but nice. Um, they were playing a game of knockout. Mm-hmm. Have you ever played a game of knockout? Yeah, with my kid. Okay. Yeah. It it's it's competitive. Mm-hmm. I mean, when we played knockout in college or the pros or whatever it was, it, it's like blood, sweat, and tears. Mm-hmm. I mean, because if you miss and your ball goes to to the half court, you got to right. chase it down. Right. Over. And then you're you're chunking it up there to try to knock the next guy mm-hmm. or gal's ball away. Right. And I mean, it's fierce. And we're talking about NFL coaches and players. I mean, Matt Lafleur is a competitor, if you've ever seen him. So or watched him coach. And uh, <laughs> I just feel bad for the guy. What a way to start, you know, with Aaron Rodgers, who's older than you as your quarterback. And now you've got to go through an Achilles surgery and spend weeks in a boot and on a cart. And I just feel bad for him. It's a tough way to really start well, on a serious note. What does that offense look like? Is anybody uh, is because that's what we were talking about. Green Bay the last several years mm-hmm. was the McCarthy offense, not mysterious enough let's uh, putting it in the most i guess kind w- w- terms possible not mysterious enough and not utilizing rogers talents to the best of anybody's ability that rogers wasn't believing in it i mean the first blush uh results that you were either eyeballing or hearing about would be what mm-hmm. it's 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 odd to talk about some of these offensive changes mm-hmm. in the off season because are they really going to happen? So when I say the Packers want to run the football more, they do. They Do they want to get the football out of Aaron's hands quicker so that he's not getting beat up throughout the course of a game and they're sustainable and then you can take that long shot? They do. But put Aaron Rodgers in the regular season in a game and Aaron Rodgers is going to, you know, pull a Jim McMahon audible. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I mean? So it's, they want to do those kinds of things. And, um, you know, with Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams in the backfield and, you know, they got rid of Randall Cobb, but Geronimo Allison's going to be healthy this year, we assume. And Devontae Adams is one of the best receivers in the game. And Equinemius St. Brown isn't a rookie anymore. So is Jimmy Graham going to get more touches in the red zone? Right. What is for, you know, why they brought him in um, to score. So you, you, you assume Matt LaFleur is extremely quarterback friendly Mm -hmm. and he's going to do these things. But what will Aaron Rodgers decide to do in the regular season starting week one against the Bears? I know. Can't wait for it. I know. I'm sure you'll be there that night. And the Bears are the team that, uh, you know, you've been closest in covering. Um, Year two of the Nagy and Trubisky um, project, if you will. Year one was so phenomenal. Uh, and Jordan Howard being being sent packing to Philadelphia, which I think is a great fit. What what is the yeah, is. what what are the expectation levels in Chicago here for this team that was a double doink away from being here in Los Angeles in week two? Oh, so painful playoffs. to hear the double doink. Right, I know. For anybody, right? ugh, um, better be better than twelve and four. I mean, that's what they're saying. Twelve wins isn't good enough in the NFL, and it's you think about all the teams that go five hundred, right, guys? Like, it's so hard to win. Rich in this league, when I go in locker rooms and, you know, Nagy is, you know, be you, uh, we, not me. Mm -hmm. He he is a master motivator. I love being around him. I'll sometimes write down things he says because I am there a lot. I live in Chicago Mm -hmm. and, you know, there's so many interesting coaches in this league that bring something different to the table. And he, he brings something different to the table. It's like when you think of Sean McVay. We want to talk about the offense, right? Mm -hmm. And how innovative it is. It's all the little things they do before the season starts that you don't see. I remember Andrew Whitworth telling me about McVay. Um, when he, when he took over, he made a mission of learning every name on the staff, Mm -hmm. not just like, you know, the football staff, but all the administration. And he studied himself in his meetings on tape. Think what? about that. Hold on a second. Wit told me that. I was like, are you kidding me? Because what? he wants to be a great leader and really have an impression on his players. So you're saying that Stacey Dale's here from the NFL Network here on the Rich Eisen Show. So McVay would speak to the team or do whatever he, coaches do with mm-hmm. the players. And it would be captured on tape. Mm-hmm. And he would then review that. 
in his office. I'm told this, yes. Uh, when I was in London a couple of years ago, <laughs> you know, Andrew Whitworth is one of my favorite players in the, in the NFL. And just some of the things that he told me as to how uh, one man can change a culture. Mm hmm. When you think of Anthony Davis coming to the Lakers and now they're a contender. Right. Well, when you get a contender for a coach, it's such an important job and or quarterback, the two, you know, faces of, of a franchise. And that's what Nagy ha oh, brings yeah. to the equation. And, and Trubisky has this team humbly in the palm of his hand. How do what do you mean by that? <sighs> He's so awesome, Rich. <laughs> He's such a great guy. Mm-hmm. His teammates just love him. I mean, he's humble. He's like one of the guys. Tom Brady's like one of the guys. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to play hard for him. His offensive line wants to block for him, block for the runners. He wants to block for Trubisky and and pass protect for Trubisky. And it's just a really neat thing to watch when that culture thing works. Mm -hmm. You know, so and a you, few teams have it. So you're the you're kind of the perfect person to to speak on all this, being uh, right there front and center on the NFC North and knowing the quarterbacks they are and you being Canadian. What do we re <laughs> what do we read into this whole uh, chugging of beers and um, the fact that Trubisky nailed it, mm -hmm. um, Stafford nailed it, mm -hmm. um, and Rogers. Again, I I make I make the excuse he's a sipper. He clearly sips his libations. That's me. Yeah. That uh, that I'm wondering how you handicap this in in terms of the um, chug gate that uh, people mm -hmm. are talking about right now. Well, if I recall, it mm -hmm. was the Washington Redskins game last year. I can't remember that Rogers played and he said he was going to go home and drink a glass of scotch or something. Yes. So he's a sipper. Here's what I told Matthew Stafford when mm -hmm. I interviewed him a couple of weeks ago. Okay. At Lions camp. I have a problem with the beer chugging. The reason being is because you have to qualify what kind of beer you're chugging. <laughs> okay. And I'm serious on this. This is really important. I Can said to Canadian. staff, I'm yes, like, I said good. to Stafford, <laughs> what was in your drink? And what do you say? He's like, well, I was having wine leading up to it. <laughs> Which is so cool. Right. Um, but I don't remember if he revealed because I started it with, mm -hmm. If it's a Guinness or a Stella or mm. like, as mm. I like to call them, Belgian waffles, because <laughs> they're hard to take down. Right. That's one thing. If right. it's a Coors Light or a Michelob Ultra, mm -hmm. we have a problem because it's so much easier to chug water than a <laughs> Stella or a Stacey Guinness. Tales, everybody. Okay. The pride of Canada. Yes. Okay. So, so anyways, uh, I said the same thing to Mitch and he kind of blushed. They were probably drinking Bud, Coors. I yeah, don't I mean, know. well, well yeah. Trubisky was at a ball game. He was important. at a White Sox game. So I don't yeah, think so that they're Bud serving. Light, I, well, Miller I shouldn't light, say whatever. that. And, you know, you could get a premium. You can <laughs> get a premium if, beverage. By the way, own, the PR staff's going like, hey, Dales, it was really a competition between David Bakhtiari and Kyle Long. Let's leave the QB out of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love the sensitivities that you sometimes yeah. touch on here. Yeah. Stacey Dales here on the Rich Eisen Show. What, what do you make of Toronto all lit up for the Raptors? What do you think about this it's and like what the, it means for the country? It's like the Carabana in Toronto. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. It's huge. It It's electrifying. Listen, I grew up in a small town in Brockville, Ontario, mm -hmm. in Canada, mm -hmm. which is 40 minutes from Elmont, Ontario, mm -hmm. which is where Dr. James Naismith invented the game of basketball. Mm -hmm. And I fell in love with it when I was eight years old. I, my first sport was soccer. And so... You know, when you're a kid learning history in Canada, you know who James Naismith is. Mm -hmm. It's important. So it's really such a proud moment for the country, especially when, you know, our national sport is lacrosse, but really it's hockey. Let's be real. Mm -hmm. You know, there isn't a household in Canada that doesn't have the NHL Hockey Night in Canada on and with Don Cherry. Right. right? <laughs> I know so, who Don Cherry is. Mm -hmm, he's the best. Um, second to you. And, Thank you. Jeez. You know, it, it, it's really cool. Just really seeing cool. this whole thing all oh, lit up. You know, and, did, and, and then, then the representation, Kawhi Leonard to be so humble. And, you know, I'll never forget Doris, the great Doris Burke interviewing him. And I don't want to be a hero. Now, every kid, if I'm a parent, I haven't blessed to be yet, hopefully, but every kid, every parent should like play that back for their kids. I don't want to be the hero. I want to be the best teammate I can be, you know, and for, you know, superstar giant athlete like that to say it, 
it's kind of Canadian. You know, there's a sense of humility to that. I loved it. So he fits up there in mm -hmm. Toronto. It's a good fit for, for him. Uh, obviously, nobody knows what he thinks about what's a good fit for him. Everyone thinks he's coming here to yeah. to Los Angeles. And the, the town, will. I mean, he wouldn't have to, apparently he could live rent-free and food-free and drink-free the rest of his life <laughs> based up there in Toronto. And that's not yeah. a joke. Like, literally, there's a wine and dine and that there's a, a sticker in every every window of every restaurant and what was that, a $3 million condo that, that somebody offered up really to for nice. free? Uh, right. Yeah. So it's, it, it seems like a good fit up there. Obviously, they won the championship. But. Yeah, but in sports, you know, Rich, nothing nothing ever can is a permanent fit. So we'll see what happens. They love him there. I think that, you know, anytime you have a guy like that, mm -hmm. a city embraces a guy like that and will until he leaves or she leaves. So... Um, but it, it, it was really cool. I had my mom and my all my family still in Canada. My mom's texting me details like, I just wanted to let you know, Kevin Durant's out. <laughs> like, <laughs> He's on it. So like, you know that. that it, she's the cutest. It has definitely been absorbed. Oh, she's by <laughs> sending me nuggets on the game. She's like, did you know that Steph Curry's wife is Canadian? Like, yeah. <laughs> I love my mom. That is fantastic. Um, and then uh, what did you, well, I mean, the, the uh, U.S. women's national team uh, won 3-0 yesterday. And I loved Carly Lloyd when she, of one of her two, her two goals, she just absolutely missled one in and then gave the golf clap celebration. I mean, what, what did you make of this whole? A ain't that a clap of, back? Right, I know, right? Okay. Right, well done, from, by the way. From week one? Right, I know. We'll call it week one. That's a good callback and clapback right there, That Stacey. is a clapback. After the emphatic 13 to nothing win right. over Thailand. Yes. Oh, she, can you believe she's 37? No. It's a, it's amazing what she's been doing. Last, how, how many games in a row is that now? That's now six World Cup games in a row, I believe, goal, which she yeah. scored. Yeah. Five or six. And and can we can we pay these women? They're so good, Rich. This is the best for years. Mm -hmm. The best of the best. I mean, substitute who you want. You know, the coach made a substitution yesterday, and I watched the game, and it, I'm fixated on it because they are like a scoring machine. Um, and it's remarkable. Like, you, you, could, you can take one out and put another in, and um, Rapino didn't even play uh, yesterday, I think, and – um, you know, uh, with Carly Lloyd, like you're talking about, there were like t 10 corner kicks in the first, I don't know, eight minutes of the game. Yeah, like if that's not forcing the issue, a corner kick is like gold in soccer. Right. It's so important. But you have obviously competed at a very high level and a lot of folks made it a, a, uh, an issue with that men wouldn't get the grief that the women's soccer team got for all of their celebrations. Mm -hmm. And I know that this is, they've already played another uh, match and a lot of people think this is uh, um, talked about and over with, but now that you're here mm -hmm. uh, on the subject, what did you make of all the celebration conversation? I'm really cool with celebrating the first six, seven, eight goals, maybe. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, here's the thing. You're a powerhouse. Now, I, I played for Canada, and we played in the 2000 Sydney Olympics humbly. There were 12 teams. We finished 11th. Okay, we we got there. It was important to get there. It's hard to get th to that stage. Sure. You have to qualify. Right. So it, it's it's a, there, the U.S. is at a different level than Thailand. And what, what you often see, and I don't know if people have talked about this part of it, what you often see in games – like that 13 to nothing which is it's a record right it doesn't happen i think canada beat puerto rico back in the late 90s 21 to nothing the other team the thailands that they, they usually get scrappy and they start injuring you so clap cheers to thailand mm -hmm. for not going there i don't think that's in their dna but a lot of countries may have and taken some low blows and caused some injury so if if you're the u.s you're fortunate to leave in some of your superstar players and leave without injury. And, you know, you have 23 players on your roster, I think. So, you know, you could have made a few more substitutions. When somebody scores five goals, it's it's a big deal for them. But 
I mean, it got a little excessive. It, it just did because the other part of it, Rich, is act appropriately to where you're supposed to be. The U.S. is supposed to dominate that game, right? So act as if. So I love the celebrations. I, I also was always taught when I was a kid, play through the whistle. And they they play through the whistle. So kudos to them for that, mm -hmm. I, w I will say. So it, it's kind of a, you know, you can go back and forth with the conversation. We did. And we did. And Barkley said the same thing you said, which is, you know, um, kind of like act like you've been there before. And mm -hmm. um, he, he told stories about <laughs> that you would take somebody out if they did something like that in the NBA. They would literally, you would, you'd be taken out. Well, that's what, that's what I'm, that's, that's what, what you're I'm talking saying. about. It's exactly what I'm talking about. When I was in college, my senior year, we, we had an amazing team and that bond that you create over the years, which is what, you know, the U S soccer team has and the U S women's basketball team. And they're just dominant and their system is so strong in the way they develop players and Canada's getting there with basketball, um, which is awesome. But w when you think about that, and I think about my, my senior year in college, we, in, in the big 12 conference, I went to Oklahoma, we beat everybody, you know, on Wednesday, Saturday by 20 to 30 points. And some teams started to get chippy. I mean, I, I was injured in a game because of it. Um, but you have to really be cognizant of what the mission is and if you were supposed to do it or not. Well, Stacey Jones, you're the best. You know how I feel about you. And uh, I look forward to, uh, with the rest of our colleagues, um, gouging the uh, NFL for free food uh, at the <laughs> symposium tomorrow night. Did I say that into a microphone? I look forward to learning uh, with my colleagues about, uh, about broadcasting over the next 48 hours. Good to see you. You too. Thanks, Rich. You bet. At Stacey Dales on Twitter and Instagram. I follow her on both. You should as well. For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download The Rich Eisen Show app.